Hey, Derek, can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Okay. All right. So we will get started. Uh, apologize for the delay. We had a little bit of a technical glitch there, as does happen. Uh, happy to have you guys with us. Hopefully, um, where you are is a little bit better than the kind of weather we're getting here in Toronto, Canada. It's a little uh, overcast, doom and gloom. So, uh, but on the contrast, we got a guy lucky to be in Florida, where it's nice and sunny normally. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we're here, obviously, to talk about Nav TV products, and this is a particularly important session. Uh, discussing the Zen Audio product. Um, for those of you guys new to um, Nav TV or perhaps even who we are, let me introduce myself. I'm Dave Singh. I'm from Jemson and we are the Canadian distributor for Nav TV products. Uh, we partnered up with them earlier this year and we're happy to be part of their team. Uh, presenting for us today is Derek Schmiedel, VP of Nav TV, and um, he's going to be taking over everything in a moment to discuss the Zen Audio product, which is uh, a full line of audio integration preamplifiers um, and uh, designed to make your life a lot easier in, in, in uh, many of today's challenging vehicles. I think by the end of today's session, you'll have a better understanding of why um, it's better to go with a preamplifier unit and understand what makes the Nav TV products basically the gold standard of the industry. So if you do have any questions, I do ask that you send them in the chat. Um, we will be monitoring them and we will answer them accordingly as we go. We will continue to keep guys on mute, but um, if there is uh, any questions that we need to uh, unmute you for, we'll do that. So without any further ado, I'm gonna hand this off to Derek and we'll take it from there. Thank you, Derek. Thank you for the introduction, Dave. Um, I'm Derek from Nav TV, and uh, today we're going to go over Zen Audio. Uh, this is a uh, a product that's been in the making since I joined the company a little over 12 years ago. Um, we started with one product for up to five now, and we've got three products that, uh, had it not been for this virus, we would have been released. I will show you one of those today. So let's see here reason my slide is not advancing there we go so we're just going to go through a couple of the topics here that we're going to talk about um, today is obviously it's about sound so when i started in the early 80s you know the, the thing that we were selling the most of is head units why were we doing that because the oem content did not have the features that the customer was looking for uh, late 80s it was the cd player mid 80s when i started it was a tape player uh, that progression has gone on and on. We're at a point right now where the vast majority of OEM systems actually do have the content the customer is looking for. We're going to learn why digital preamplifiers are better than any other way to do this because they provide predictable results. Okay, they increase customer satisfaction, they reduce time. But most of all, that these solve problems that traditional analog solutions cannot, such as supporting echo cancellation, removing frequency limitations and all pass filters. So what we're gonna do when we go into this here, we're gonna head into it head first. I don't know why it's not advancing. There we go. Okay, the fact is, is that the majority of vehicles already have content that the customer wants. They just don't have the sound that they're looking for. So this is a prime example. If any of you guys are familiar with Brian Mitchell, uh, Brian's a great guy, a great competitor. He has one of the most amazing sounding cars out there. And at the heart of his system for signal uh, is the M650. Uh, Brian has now won three world championships in the Expert SQ+. Plus. Um, and it's really a testament of what the combination of really good gear can do in the right hands. So we're going to talk about the challenges faced through analog integration that are eliminated by a digital preamplifier. Uh, the first thing that I'll tell everybody listening is I do not want you to um, take what I'm about to say out of context. OK, 
okay? There are many ways that you could skin a cat. There are vehicles where pre-amplifiers are not available. And in those cases, absolutely, the old school way of doing things is the only way to do it. However, whether it's our preamplifier or somebody else's, if there's one available for the car, I highly recommend that you use it. And there's a lot of reasons why, and we're gonna talk about 10 of them. Hands-free echo cancellation, okay? This is a huge one. When you converge a signal through analog means, what happens is you create a slight delay. And what happens is a lot of times you will get a tremendous amount of echoes. Now in Canada and at least 17, 17 states in America, there are laws you have to use hands-free. Imagine your consumer's dissatisfaction where that five, ten, fifteen thousand dollar system now won't really enable them to use their phone while they're driving. Frequency limitations. We're talking about factory crossovers and everything else. All pass filters. Okay, if you don't know what an all pass filter is, it is a frequency dependent filter. And these are employed by OEM systems. Systems that have 5.1 or 7.1 playback when you're not using a center channel speaker. We're gonna look at the limitations of OEM dynamic range and subpar signal to noise ratio. Floor noise, again, excessive time testing. Reliable turn on circuit. Factory amplifiers muting outputs, as well as acoustic noise compensating microphones. You've heard of these called ANCs. So first topic, analog circuits do create a delay in the audio signal. Okay, this delay can interfere with the factory echo cancellation of the hands-free systems specifically with systems with very loud bass because they pressurize the cabin. They will affect the nature of the echo cancellation system and performance. By using a Zen Audio preamplifier, it supports factory echo cancellation. What it also does is something pretty unique to our devices. Only in a Bluetooth hands-free call, we are implementing a 200 hertz high pass crossover. What this does is it eliminates the subwoofer from actually playing during a phone call. It, you cannot do that by any other means analog. It does not work. So just one of the few things that a preamplifier will do where you cannot get it through traditional means. Okay, frequency limitations. Okay, OEM electronics also implement crossovers which limit frequency response. It can be a high pass, a band pass or a low pass. And guess what? If all pass filters are used in an OEM system, you cannot converge multiple channels to achieve a full range signal. What it'll do is it'll leave a hole in your sound stage that you can drive a truck through. Zen Audio provides a full range output with no limitations. Okay, It grabs the signal in the digital domain before the radio or amplifier performs the digital to analog conversion. Okay, All crossovers, all pass filters are eliminated which enables you to configure the correct new setting for your aftermarket products without any constraints. This right here, guys, is absolutely the number one reason to use a preamplifier, okay? Five point one or seven point one playback. A lot of times aftermarket systems will not use a center channel. Okay, now in a 5.1 or 7 point system in a car, the center channel is actually used to reproduce the vocals, the same way your home theater does it. If the speaker is a single voice coil, and a lot of them are, and you're doing it by traditional means, but you don't want to use a center, it's going to be impossible to add vocals to both your left and right channels while maintaining stereo separation. Okay, Zen Audio does support 5.1 and 7.1 mix down. What a mix down means is that we take the information that's usually played by the center channel speaker and we actually place it into the left and right front channels while maintaining stereo separation. Now, if the source is encoded in Dolby or DTS 5.1 or 7.1 and you want to use the center channel speaker, this then also supports that. So you would actually parse it. Kind of cool if you're listening to uh, DVDs and stuff. Okay. Now, 
the reason that this is two slides is I want you guys to understand the difference between dynamic range and signal noise ratio. And this is extremely important, okay? So two sound system characteristics affected by how accurately we represent a sample value. So the dynamic range is the ratio of the strongest to the weakest signal. Think about your Bugs Bunny cartoons where they have orchestral music that really, really low passes and all of a sudden really, really high or in rock and roll when it goes from a very, very light passage to a very loud one, okay? So the signal and noise is the ratio of a given signal with noise in the system. You guys have seen this as a ratio 102 to one, 112 to one. What that basically means is in the 102 to one is there's 103 decibels of signal. You have 102 decibels of sound to one decibel of noise, okay? The dynamic range is limited at the lower end by the noise in the system, and every system does have noise. And at the higher end, by the level at which the greatest signal can be presented without distortion. Okay, the signal to noise ratio equals the dynamic range when, used, when a signal of the greatest possible amplitude is present. It is smaller than the dynamic range when a softer sound is present. So if a system has a dynamic range of 80 decibels, a signal of 30 dB below maximum would yield a signal noise ratio of 50 dB. The dynamic range predicts the maximum signal to noise ratio under ideal conditions. Okay, so here's the problem with this doing it the old way. Most OEM systems employ a class D amplifier which has been designed to minimize cost, space, and weight while maximizing output. This trade-off leads to a traditionally noisy output with excessive floor noise. Okay, the example, and this is a real one, guys, your $80,000, $90,000 Ford Raptor with a factory Ford A to B, B and O sound system, that has a signal noise ratio of about 87 to one. Okay, to put that in perspective, that's about a $39 retail CD player. Now you're not going to use a $39 retail CD player in a four, five, six, seven, or greater value sound system. Okay. But what you need to take from this is that you can manipulate levels and you can deploy equalizers, but you cannot change the dynamic range of an OEM signal input. It does not happen. Okay. So how is this different? Zen Audio is actually converting the digital information to audio through an extremely high digital to analog converter and outputs a signal noise ratio between 112 to one, that would be an example of the M650, or 123 to one, that's the Zen M and Zen V. Uh, the A2B and several others fall right in the middle of this. And the most important thing to understand is that this meets or exceeds absolutely any aftermarket radio ever made with almost a zero floor noise. What this means is that it is no longer necessary to remove the head unit. In fact, you can build around, in many cases, the factory head unit in the vehicle and achieve the same results as if you were using top caliber aftermarket head units. So guys, this is a really important thing. Okay, time is money. Every single second that it takes you to identify speakers, phase, crossover ranges, okay, is time wasted. It's time that a lot of times are not being paid for, whether that is the result of it taking you longer, the salesperson not accounting for it. But in my 30 plus year career, I've found that this is all time that we're having to spend that we can better do other things, okay? The other problem is that many shops don't own the proper equipment or worse, some techs don't know how to use these things. So with digital preamplifiers, it takes all this out of the equation. It literally installs in minutes versus hours, okay? It provides a predictable output and cell foundation upon to build, and it speeds up the installation process, okay? So if you can shave time off an install, it increases the per hour average shop profit margin, okay? And we're all in this to make money, guys. Reliable turn on circuit, okay? We've seen that in some cases, signal sense circuits are not 100% reliable. And worse, if you get that and you hook some of these things up to an accessory signal, it can create system pops, especially on turn on and turn off. So Zen Audio does provide a network driven and reliable turn on circuit. 
The circuit ensures that vehicles create warning chimes to the factory audio system and that they're audible, even if the radio is off. Why is this important? So let's take a 2016 Chevy truck. Very, very common vehicle. We're not talking about a Ferrari or a Lamborghini here. It's a vehicle everyone on here sees every day. Their system actually uses the factory audio system to elicit chimes, warning chimes, turn signals, hood open, low engine oil, parking sensors, okay? If your system is off, it's not getting the signal. If the radio is off, how are you gonna get these things? The Zen Audio compensates for them and allows them to pass through even if the radio is all the way down or off. Okay, this is the second most topic talked about in every forum. The fact is, is that a lot of vehicles out there are using amplifiers that are looking for a proper load on the OEM speaker. Okay, it's a protection feature. And what it does is that the amplifier sees a load, whether it's too low, too high, or fully open, what it will do is actually it will cut off that channel. It'll mute the channel. Now, this leads to customers coming back saying, hey, I keep losing audio. And it's a huge question because installers are having to guess what impedance do I use? What resistor, you know, work value, what wattage value do we use? And I'm not kidding you. Get on any of these audio forums. I don't care if it's uh, mobile electronics uh, syndicate, if it's a 12 volt insider, many, many, many more. You can, you can have installers from all over the world asking, what value resistor do I use on this Chrysler vehicle or enter brand name here so it doesn't mute? Well, guess what? If you would have used a preamplifier, there's no guessing, okay? There's no problem. Zen Audio does not require load resistors to work and will not mute the outcome. Again, predictable outcome and less comebacks. Eric, I'm just going to interject here for a yeah. second. I'm sure everybody's been caught, you know, with their pants down in the install bay, uh, you know, working on a car. It's got to be out at five o'clock. And then suddenly, you know, factory amplifier shuts down. Um, yep. That's always been a, been an issue. And you don't have the, you know, the right impedance resistors. You don't have load resistors or anything like that. So this is another reason why, you know, pre-amplifier devices um, make much more sense than trying to do, go post amplifier or after the amplifier. And uh, before Derek continues, you know, feel free to chime in with any questions via the chat um, and we will make sure that uh, Derek addresses them. And uh, for anybody else that uh, was trying to join uh, by the Facebook on the CMA Expo, we apologize. We've moved that over to the Jemson uh, for anybody that's being texted or anything like that. So I'll let you continue. Sorry about that, Derek. By the way, you know, guys that decide to contribute, we've got uh, some Nav TV swag. Um, we've got some awesome shirts in any size, as long as it's extra large. Uh, that we will be given to some of you guys that decide to participate and ask questions. So we want to encourage um, uh, lots of questions, lots of interaction. So don't be shy. Um, feel free to ask lots of uh, uh, lots of questions. Okay. Thanks, Derek. Sorry about that. No, no, my pleasure. Okay. So I'm just going to get this up. This is the number one topic on car audio functions. How many of you guys have run into a vehicle where you get done? And all of a sudden you're getting popping out of the speakers, especially out of the subs, some weird stuff going on. Everyone is going up. Oh, it's acoustic noise compensation microphones. Okay. What these are used for in an OEM system is to adjust audio levels as a result of environmental conditions in most cases. Okay. So an example would be, I've got my windows up. I roll it down. I'm getting wind noise. What it'll do is it'll actually compensate in those frequencies that the wind is interfering. Just a small example of how these are used, okay? What most people don't understand is that in some systems, they're also used as a supplemental echo cancellation. So when you're having to cut these out of a factory system, you may actually deter the factory echo cancellation from working properly, okay? But where they really screw with things is in an aftermarket stereo system with bass. Okay, they have to be disconnected because they provide feedback noise and other problems. Now, this adds time to the job. It may affect the echo cancellation. Like I said, it's the number one topic on car audio forums. In fact, if you go on Educar, uh, just Google ANC microphone, and I think you get a picture of Ken Ward with a shotgun in his mouth. Um, with Zen, 
you don't disconnect any of these ANC mics, okay? This keeps all the OEM functions working perfectly and reduces labor time. So with the preamplifier, another really good reason why to use these things. So we've learned about the challenges in traditional things versus preamplifier. So what I've got in front of you, this is a 2019 Audi. And uh, I want you to take a look at what's in this dash, okay? This thing plays DVD movies. It plays USB files, okay? It does iPod, it has satellite radio, okay? It has Bluetooth, it has navigation. Are you ever going to get this customer uh, to change this thing? The answer is no, okay? It is no. Okay, Corey Valancourt. Can a Zen piece be installed in the vehicle without OEM amplifier? The example he gave is a 2019 VW Atlas, non-Fender. The answer to your question is yes. We sell a programmer for the Zen V and for the Zen M. With the Zen V, there's no stipulations. Uh, with the Zen M, there, there is. You need to make sure that the radio itself codes over CAN instead of Ethernet. But on VW, we sell a tool. It's called the Zen V PRG. And if you get a vehicle without a factory amplifier, it must have the most 150 system. So that would be a radio with designator MIB, MIBHS, MIB2, MIB2.5, or MEB3, okay? It will actually plug into the OBD, it will recode the radio, and it will turn on the fiber optic output. So good question, Corey, and thank you. The point of this slide, guys, is that this customer is never going to be in your shop to get a head unit replacement, okay? Everything is in this car they're ever going to want to need, but they're going to come on and they're going to say, hey, you know what? I bought the B&O system or enter, you know, a branded name here, and it just doesn't have the fidelity or the volume or the bottom end that I'm looking for. So let's take the next slide, and uh, guys, this is the challenge that you're working with in this car. Twenty three speaker system. Now, it's got the ability to play DTS and Dolby 5.1 and 7.1, and it's got stuff all over the place. How do you tackle this animal? So I actually went through this particular car and I pieced it out for you. So we're gonna look at this from an old school traditional side. Okay, first thing is, you cannot use an inexpensive line converter because this is a high voltage amplifier. Okay, we're talking high 20s into the 30 volt range and some outputs. If you use a cheap line output converter, you will have a customer coming back with problems in a couple of weeks. If they listen to rap, a couple of days, okay, they will melt the things. You have to retain the center channel for vocal playback in both 5.1 and 7.1, okay? So there's no option to delete that speaker. You're having to use another channel. The system has all pass filters and it's frequency dependent. So guess what, guys? You have to pass any channel with an all-pass feed just straight through. It has time alignment per channel. What happens if, for example, you wanna do pillar speakers where you're actually moving the location of the speakers? It becomes a problem. Okay, you have factory crossovers. So let's just say that um, we'll use a good speaker. Let's say a C7 JL Audio, pretty good speaker, okay? And you're gonna see your factory system has the six and a half inch in the door that limits that speaker only to be able to play down to about a hundred Hertz, but only up to about a thousand. And then there's a four inch that takes over. How are you gonna get that two way system to play that range? Okay. It, this thing does have an array of ANC microphones that has to be bypassed. The factory echo cancellation will absolutely be compromised. Okay, because it has all pass filters, you cannot converge channels for a full range signal. What this means, guys, is that you're having to use multiple channels of amplification, which increase costs. So in this car, what we found when we evaluated it, you have to pass a minimum of 13 channels independently. Okay, that is a lot of channels. So that would be 13 channels of amplification, plus let's say an audio control, two LC7s. Do the math on this, guys. Okay, now after all this work is done, after all these limitations, it's got a really noisy class D amplifier in this car. Okay, and again, you can equalize the audio. 
but you cannot improve on the dynamic range of the input signal to your aftermarket electronics. So it's a huge limitation. And it took me several hours to look at each of these signals, so it is time consuming. You'd be better off putting something in you can do in a few minutes that again, and you see it throughout this presentation, predictable outcomes, guys. So we're going to jump in and we're going to start talking about the individual Zen Audio products. And we'll start off at the very beginning. But what all Zen have in common is a literally no holes barred, high component quality. Okay, we did not set out to build the best Zen Audio piece for a certain price. We literally set out the same way that Pioneer did with ODR, the same way Alpine did with F1 status, the same way that Sony did with their high resolution head unit, which is about $1,500. And we said, we don't wanna build anything but the absolute best. So we chose the best components and build quality and the actual tonality is what really sets Nav TV apart from our competitors when it comes to digital preamplifiers. You'll notice the catchphrase, phrase, Burr Brown, there it is, we are using all high quality components without compromise. The digital analog converters are Texas Instrument, Burr Browns. Okay, how are we able to do this? We grab the signal in the audio path in the digital domain. Okay, we're actually becoming the digital to analog converter internally. This is what allows us to take the example of I gave you of a Ford with an A2B system where the factory amp is only 87 to one. Well, how are we able to output 116 to one? It's by doing the, D the DAC previous to that. So we are doing the conversion. We're not relying on the amplifier or head unit to do it for us. Okay. We are 100% compatible on all Zen Audio products with factory Bluetooth echo, echo cancellation. This is really important for doctors, lawyers, real estate agents, or anybody throughout Canada since it's uniform law up there. Okay, it eliminates all factory crossovers, timeline, equalization, and all pass filters, guys. We bring it right down to the foundation for you. So you have a flat, unadulterated, multi-channel process to work with in very little time. Okay, the signal to noise ratio literally is between 112 to 123. You'll see these on each of the examples of independent products that we bring. Okay, and it installs in minutes. And again, guys, verifiable and predictable outcomes. And this is a pretty good one. We'll down mix vocals from the center channel into the street left and right channels when not utilizing the center channel. And we are competition proven. So the first of the line is the M650. This is for the most 50 platform from General Motors, Chevrolet, and GM. Hey, Eric, before we get into this product, yeah. uh, I know we got some newbies on this, and I just want to reiterate a really important point that you were just talking about, um, which is, you know, um, you can, if you want, take LOCs like Eric had mentioned. Uh, you know, we, we supply a bunch of them, et cetera, et cetera, and try to reverse engineer what's happening. Um, but with everything that Derek said, EMC noise cancellation, um, all the other problems that you run into, each one of these manufacturers would all recommend, if you have the choice of going with a free amplifier device, you're better off doing that than trying to reverse it after the amplifier, okay? So we're not saying don't use this, but what we are saying is, if you have a choice, you're better off doing that. It'll save you time, it'll save you money, and a lot of grief and things that you probably wouldn't be able to solve uh, you know, using LOCs and, and whatnot. So I, really important point, I just wanted to stress it for anybody that uh, you know, wasn't clear on that. Sorry about that, Derek. No, no, look, you made the same point I made earlier, guys. Um, there's a million ways to skin a cat, uh, but if a preamplifier is available for the vehicle, it will save you time, frustration, and look, no one likes comebacks, no one likes problems. So, you know, in, in a perfect world, it would never happen. We try to minimize it. Um, but some of the, the features of the M650, and by the way, guys, this is the unit straight off the shelf, no modification, that's in Brian Mitchell's World Championship car. Um, it's also, believe it or not, the worst sounding of the Zen Audio products. So if that gives you any indication of the quality and the sound quality we're producing, 
Uh, it should. This unit does have a true 112 to 1 analog signal to noise ratio. Okay. Uh, we are processing a bare minimum of 24 bit 48K response, which is higher than CD quality. Um, we are using Burr Brown DAX, uh, 192 kilohertz, 32 bit. Now, the question I get all the time is, Derek, why are you limiting this to 24 bit 48K? Well, in GM vehicles, um, the 16 and on with CarPlay will actually allow 24 bit 96K. Um, the newer ones will do the same. Uh, anything that's higher in the CarPlay units, it will down convert. So if you're playing lossless in the system, it'll actually down convert. But the reason we do this is because we always intended on working with other companies who manufacture DSPs. And what we found is that overwhelmingly, the vast majority of DSPs out there will all be able to accept a 24-bit 48K. Uh, and that's why we limited it. Okay, so this one has six analog outputs, uh, front, left, and right, rear, left, and right, center, and sub. Uh, it does have a true six volt peak output, which is about 2.1 volts RMS. Um, that's just a reference standard for our CA signal. This is a unique piece because we also, also have a variable SPDIF and TOSLink. Now these work simultaneously with the analog. In fact, we are slightly delaying the digital outputs on all the Zen pieces so that you can do this. And uh, with some processors out there where it allows you to mix both digital and analog, you can produce some pretty cool results by doing it. Okay, again, you're not having to bypass any ANC mics. Okay, factory Bluetooth echo cancellation works perfectly. Properly attenuates warning chimes. This is a unique feature and it's been a problem with GM for years, guys. Is I remember the first time that I did a stereo system and I think it was a 2007 Escalade. And every time that the, the customer would open the door with the keys in, it would about give you a heart attack. These warning chimes just would just blow you out of the car. So we take care of that as well. And we do it to factory levels. So uh, it's all to gain. So the factory system works on chime levels of 20% of whatever the designated volume is set out on the radio. So if it's set at full volume, it's 20% of full volume. If it's set a half, it's 20% of half. And there's a reason I'm bringing this up and the very last slides that we'll go over will show you why, because the system's set up totally differently. Okay, but here's the perfect part. It eliminates all factory EQ and time alignment, something you cannot do with analog. You do not have to converge audio signals at all. It eliminates any all pass filters. That is impossible with any other means. You do not have to have load resistors to keep the factory amp active. It provides a system turn on guys and it is plug and play. So we're gonna go through a couple examples of how this can be utilized. Now the M650 is unique because it does not require the factory amplifier to be removed. In fact, it's the only device that we sell in the Zen audio lineup where the factory amp can stay in and you have to keep it in the loop. Okay, it's part of the most network is the reason why. So this is a very simple example of using the factory head unit right to an amplifier, okay? So you can use an amplifier with either digital or analog inputs, come right out of the M650, straight into the amplifier and go out from there. Or a more advanced system where you are coming out of the M650 into an EQ or digital processor and then out to the system. So this is actually Brian Mitchell's vehicle. Uh, if you see him, it shows a really super nice guy and uh, he's very, very uh, easy to get along. He'd be happy to give you a demo. But uh, this is the Evo ELR. Uh, this is using the M650 in it, along with some really, really high caliber arc audio and other gear. Um, let's see here. So this is one of the newer pieces to the Zen lineup. The reason I put it here is because it is the baby brother to the M650. This is for newer general motor vehicles, um, starting with about the 2017 some of the Cadillacs. Um, it started at 19 in the 1500 series Chevy trucks. And now it's in about 95% of the 2020 lineup for General Motors across the board. So like the M650, this does have 112 to one analog, 
24 bit 48K frequency response. Okay, uses the exact same Burr Brown DAX, exactly the same outputs as the M650. So front left and right, rear left and right, center and subwoofer. Six volt peak output, again, 2.1 volt RMS. This one has a variable toss link. What we found after building the M650 is that really nobody was using the SPDIF output. Um, so to conserve space on the board, we got rid of it. Um, so the toss link is there. There's no module you've got to plug in. It's included with every one. Um, and that works simultaneously with the analogs. No bypassing ANC microphones, again, we're going all over the hit list of everything we looked at in traditional means that can become a problem. Just like the M650, uh, this one also it properly attenuates warning chimes. Uh, it does it at the same ratio, 20% of whatever the factory volume is. It also eliminates off factory EQ and time alignment. Okay, no converging audio signals to achieve full range. Now, what is different about this one than the M650 is you must remove the amplifier. Okay, on GM with the M650 and with the AVB, you must have a Bose sound system, guys. So, and also on both, it's very important that you qualify the radio. If it's a seven inch radio, then it is not gonna be compatible regardless of what it has. It is not either on the M650's case, a most vehicle or on the 19 and up Chevy trucks, basically AVB. But again, no load resistors you need to put in the loop. Provides a system turn on, guys. Uh, it's really, really simple application. So this is just another example of how the system can be wired. You'll see the note that the Bose amplifier does have to be removed with this product, but it can be utilized either digitally or analog. You can put it right to the amplifier or you can put it straight through a processor. So this is an example where it's just going to the amplifier Eric, so, quick, quick yep. question for you. So you mentioned that it doesn't fit on some GM vehicles. Is there an easy way for dealers to find out? Absolutely. So on the older vehicles, so let's take from about um, a lot of 2014 to about 2018 vehicles. In the trucks, um, if you open the glove box, you're going to see a white placard. They're called RPO codes. And what you're looking for is you're looking for designation of IO4, IO5, or IO6. It's the only code that starts with IO, okay, on that list. If they have IO4, IO5, or IO6, and a Bose sound system, then the M650 is compatible. On AVB vehicles, again, starting in about 17 and some Cadillacs, but really gaining ground in 19 and 20, what you'll find is on the driver's door sill, there is a very large QR code. Okay, it's on a pretty big sticker. Use your phone QR reader and it will actually print out the RPO code. So the radio compatibility will show you IOT as in Tom or IOS as in Sally. If it shows IOR, IOA, IOB, it is not compatible with the Zen AVB. And obviously, with that piece, you also have to have a Bose sound system. So the Zen V and Zen M, there's a reason these are on one slide, OK? Hardware-wise, guys, these are absolutely identical. You can literally flash a Zen V to a Zen M or a Zen M to a Zen V, OK? We're dealing with a different animal here because we're dealing with most 150. Most 150 is a very robust, very, very fast network, and we're able to get a signal noise ratio of 123 dB out of this beauty, out of the analog section. Okay, same type of 24-bit 48K frequency response. Okay, same Burr Browns we're using in the rest of the, uh, the product lines. This one, however, has 12 analog outputs. And the way that they work is channels one through six are front, left, and right. Channels 7, 8, 9, and 10, or rear left and right, 11, 12, or center and sub. Again, like the other, uh, the other product, 6 volt peak output, 2.1 volts RMS. Variable toss link. Again, it works simultaneously with the analog outputs. No bypassing ANC mics. Now, this took that Audi job, 23 speakers, 
from hours and hours of labor and integration products to literally a few minutes. So same type of benefits with these. Now, what makes these very, very interesting, Corey brought up with the Zen V and Zen M in most cases, even if the system does not have a factory amplified system, we do make a multi-use tool, which are fairly economical. And what the tool will do is it will actually program the factory head unit for an amplifier. Now with the Zen V line, so that's Volkswagen, Audi, Porsche, Bentley, and 19 and up a lot of the Lamborghinis, the 17 and up Urus, uh, but it will actually turn that on so you don't have to have an amplified system. Zen M on the other hand, the vast majority you can do it with, there are some radios, the designator is, I believe it's called an NR218 radio. That radio, as well as the new MBUC systems, programs through Ethernet. They don't program through CAN. So the Zen M programmer will not work on those vehicles, but it will work on the vast majority of the other vehicles. Again, the benefit is you don't have to have an amplified system to install these. And the programmer, we've actually had shops that have buy it. You can literally program hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cars. It's, it's, uh, there's no licensing or anything else. We just did it because a lot of people didn't have either access to a Mercedes-Benz dealership that could do it or to, you know, some of the Porsche, VW, Audi dealerships out there as well. Uh, even if they did, sometimes they couldn't program these for an amplifier. So, and this piece also does give you selectable time alignment. Um, I will make an, uh, just a mental note to you guys. If you're using a DSP, please make sure that you're not using our time alignment. Use the time alignment in a DSP what this was set to do is just give another feature uh, that is accessible when not using a DSP to make it sound a little bit better for the driver, but it's not to be used in addition to your DSP. So this is an application here again of where the Zen V would be used. So this Porsche, um, that is uh, the factory system in there. And again, all the same features we saw in Audi. You know, it's got a beautiful layout and Porsche customers are pretty uh, discerning. So they're not going to change the radio, guys. Here's a Mercedes Benz variant. Same type of thing. You're not going to get this guy to change that radio out. It's got everything they want. And, you know, I mean, I don't know how aesthetically you can make it look good in this car. Here's just another example. This is an Audi. Same type of deal, guys. You know, that, that this guy is not going to want to change the system out. So we're going to get on to the more popular products. Zen A2B, without a doubt, is the number one selling Zen audio piece by a large, large margin, guys. And there's a couple reasons why. Number one, Ford and Lincoln sell a lot of vehicles. Um, in 2020, they have now made the A2B audio network pretty uniform across the board, with the exception of the Mustang. Uh, you've got it in the Escape, you've got it in the Explorer, you've got it in now all the Super Duties with Bang Olufsen, all of the F-150s with Bang Olufsen, you've got it in the European market, and I believe in some trim levels in America, in the Focus, and other popular vehicles. So there's a lot of Ford vehicles being sold, but I'll tell you, the b &O sound system in these vehicles, or they call it Revell in Lincoln, just sounds absolutely horrible. It is literally the worst sounding premium audio system I have personally heard. So these guys are spending a lot of money on these vehicles. They want good sound. And man, does this do it. Okay. I just, saw, yep. I just saw Keith McCumber give a big thumbs down to that B&O system. Yeah. <laughs> Not like it. Yeah. Look, I, I, I wasn't embellishing when I said when we tested it, it was 100, it was 87 to one was a signal noise. It, it really sounds bad. It really does. So it's a pretty easy sell. Um, this system itself goes in pretty easily. Uh, it's very, very similar to the rest of the, the products. A little bit higher signal noise ratio in this product than on the uh, GM products. Um, it's just because the A2B network has that flexibility. So like the Zen V and Zen M, it does have 12 analog outputs. Uh, six volt peak output, 2.1 volt RMS, variable toss link like the rest of the line, you know, and again, the benefits, you know, not having to screw with ANC mics, supports echo cancellation. 
uh, configurable chime and alert pass, which is kind of a cool feature because this one does a lot more. Derek, is this a piece that you would recommend that customers stock? Oh, absolutely. Without a question. Look, the, the Ford piece, um, it sells, I think, three to one over any of the other Zen Audio pieces out there. Uh, it's just such a common use, especially in Ford trucks, which are everywhere. Um, and there's just no way to make those systems really sound good. Now, this does require you getting rid of the amplifier. So I would not recommend this in a system where you're just doing bass. But for the guy that's, that's wanting to have really good sound in the car, you can't really do it. Um, I mean, I've heard a couple of guys that have done it and they put some DSPs and it sounds okay, but there's floor noise. There's a bunch of other stuff that, you know, you know these systems, you know what they can sound like that they really can't do anything about. So the, the A2B piece is definitely one that I would say, you know, yeah, keep it in stock. I mean, it's a, it's a great piece. Um, now, I will tell you guys, because I own a vehicle um, where <laughs> this has been employed, and I've heard a lot of people saying about, oh, I've heard you have to run to the battery or the ground. Yeah, you do. It's not a recommendation, guys. You have to do it, okay? With these pieces, especially in a larger system, it's not just that the Ford vehicles or Chevy vehicles are glued together, or that in the Ford case, it's aluminum. Okay, if you take a piece of odd gauge wire, guys, and you cut it in half, and you strip about two inches of wire back on each side, and you jam those wires together, and you use a multimeter to check the impedance between it, you're going to get about zero ohms, or pretty close to it, okay? Whatever the resistance is in your leads. Now, keep the leads in. Start wiggling that wire and see what happens. So I did this in my wife's vehicle, which is a Ford F-150, and I did it in my brother's vehicle, He's got a top of the line Sierra Denali truck. My wife's vehicle, bone stock, going to a very, very good grounding point within the vehicle where the seat is grounded. Uh, I got about 12 ohms to the battery negative. Now, when I drove the vehicle using a min max set setting, it went to as high as about 45 ohms and as low as about 0.01. Okay. Now, would you guys run a wire or attach anything to a circuit with those readings? because I wouldn't, and you can't. My brother's vehicle was even worse. When we did it, he was up to 78 ohms. So I don't care that you have people say it's okay, okay? Again, we are going for predictable outcomes, guys. And guess what? You get a vehicle where you have this, it is best case scenario to sell it to the customer from day one. And I will tell you what happens with Zen Audio products. We use Burr Brown DAX. And in order not to color the audio, we have no capacitor in line. It can't and make it sound the way these things do. But guess what happens? If your high powerful amplifiers start starving for ground and you have used the Zen Audio piece, it will take the path of least resistance. Guess where it's going to pull ground from, guys? It's going to pull it right through the Zen Audio piece. It will damage the DAX. And then guess what? You're having to replace it. So it's not a suggestion. We're telling people you have to do it or you're going to have problems. Okay. But if you look at these numbers guys and you follow what we're trying to tell you, everything goes well. Now, one thing I will tell you is the Zen A2B is the first piece from day one. We actually designed this thing to have upgradable capability. So there does exist qualifiers. I mentioned the Ford Mustang in 2020 and the 17 through 19 Super Duty do have B&O badge systems, okay? The qualifier is right here. If you can see the amplifier, there is a small blue plug. The presence of that blue plug plus either the Revell or the B&O badge is the qualifier, okay? So the Zen A2B will work with any Ford and Lincoln vehicle that has either Ravel or Beano badging with that blue port on the amplifier, factory amplifier. If it does not have that blue port, it will not work. So there, there are gonna be situations where it'll be Beano badging and Ravel badging, but not have the blue port? Um, in Ford, yes, not in, not in the Ravel and Lincoln that I have seen, but in Ford, the 2020 Mustang does have a Beano system that actually uses the old analog Sony amplifier 
and in the Ford Super Duties, so 250, 350, 450, et cetera, et cetera, from 17 to 19, they do have B&O badge systems where the amplifier is, again, the analog Sony amplifier. It is not A to B. So actually getting to the amplifier and making sure it has that plug is the only qualification you need. Thanks. So again, like the other ones, guys, you are removing the factory amplifier. This isn't all or nothing. Hence my comment, if you're just doing a base upgrade, this isn't the right product. But Zen can be used either straight to the amplifier or through a processor. Again, you can use analog or digital, or in this case, both. And we put some pretty cool features into this piece. So the first thing is, is you can actually adjust alerts chime settings okay you can actually take settings let's say for example that uh let me go back one page hold on guys let me just go back one page here and eh, it's not letting me do it now great now it's frozen uh, anyways what it does i'm sorry guys the starting to uh, wait for the program to respond great it threw a Okay, hold on, Dave. I have to restart this here. Okay. Page. Derek's only got a couple of things on his desktop there, it looks like. Just a couple. Just a couple. <laughs> okay, concurrent slide. Oh, while Derek, um, you know, reboots there. Can you see that screen again? Uh, not as of yet. All right, hold on. Let me share screen again. Okay, and that's gonna be I did see a couple of comments in the uh, Zoom um, group chat. You know, Keith uh, mentioned that they had a portion there right now there for uh, a Zen unit being put in, which is pretty awesome. I know the guys at Sensegate have had a lot of experience uh, using the NAV TV products in their cars, um, and they really like them quite a bit. I no. do have, um, is there anybody else that has any experience using um, nav TV versus a competitor? And I'm not trying to bash on any competitors, but one of the things I consistently see on different forums, you know, where somebody may have went with a, you know, a more economical solution mm -hmm. is the potential of problems. And, you know, when there are problems, there's a lot of time, a lot of hours that go into getting the car back in, trying to resolve it. And ultimately the cost savings that went into, you know, um, buying the cheaper product got thrown out the window because they end up having to resolve the problem by just going with the nav tv unit uh, oh, look, it's true guys and we're not immune to it i mean what you've got with ford and gm right now are the fact that these vehicles are actually wi-fi enabled so as the oem comes up with updates they're literally pushing these things over the air guys uh and you know i'll be the first person to admit no a frame ground is not okay by the way um <laughs> So yeah, the, the Yukon that you mentioned, the uh, frame is not okay. The frame has been dipped in a solution and then painted. And guess what? If you do the test on the frame, it's the same thing. Um, you know, it's, it's just best, best case scenario is run straight from the, uh, the lead on the battery back, guys. But, before you uh, get in, sorry, Derek, before you get into this, you know, going back to something you said, you know, a moment ago, mm -hmm. um, you know, these new vehicles are now sitting on your driveway and connecting via GSM, yeah. uh, you know, I know my, my truck has it and, uh, you know, you don't have to be uh, uh, connected to your Wi-Fi network at home. They, they're coming with their own GSM networks built into it. Manufacturers are pushing updates to your vehicles as they sit and idle. So how a vehicle behaves today could be different tomorrow. And those can cause issues um, sometimes. It's it's frustrating, believe me, you know, a little over a year ago, um, the, the actual product we're talking about, we had a very stable product and all of a sudden we started getting customers that would say, hey, I either took my vehicle to a dealership or I came out this morning and now I'm having these weird issues. And uh, what it was, was that they were pushing updates. Um, we're a pretty proactive company, um, but you know, no aftermarket company has the ear of the, the, the OEMs, guys. It's not like Ford is going to call us and, hey, hey, Nav TV, we just wanted to warn you uh, that we're making this change to these Ford vehicles. This is what it is. And uh, 
this is what's going to change so that we can change our product. Um, if these OEM updates actually change the way that the OEM systems work, we have to change. And we ended up actually flying to Dearborn last year and meeting with Ford. And they were really nice. Um, they got us in touch with uh, analog devices as well. And uh, we were able to uh, work with some of our customers, some local vehicles, some remote vehicles to come up with an update that solved all the problems. But um, that's what's challenging about this category is that when the OEMs make a change, our engineering staff has to be on this all the time and uh, you know, correct it as, as soon as possible. But the, um, this piece is kind of different uh, that we're talking about with the A2B. You can do things that are kind of cool. Like for example, if I want to use the analog channels to be able to put warning chimes into the system, but I want to use Toslink to, uh, to actually power the front stage, I can actually strip the audio out. So I can make a Ford truck that normally has the warning chimes out of the driver front speaker and the par rear parking sensors out of the rear uh, driver side speaker. I can actually use the two channel toss link. Uh, and I can drive and channel that to the front left and right. But then what I can do is I can actually strip the audio out out of those things and only allow the warning chimes to go in analog. So we can actually change the way things work on the system. So we can either select digital toss link so that it will actually non-fade, which is traditional, or it'll be stuck to the front. So with the OEM system using that example I gave you, let's say that the truck's got a lot of aftermarket electronics and engine noise is a real big concern. You want toss link because it's immune to that noise. You could designate the toss link and you could designate it front only so that when you fade the factory system, it'll fade out the toss link, believe it or not. You can't do that with any other way because toss link in automobile, it's just two channel, right? If you've got a system itself where you've got a really abusive customer, you can set it up to negative 12 dBFS. So what negative zero dBFS is guys is the hottest digital signal that you can accept without clipping, all right? So if you've got an animal that turns the bass treble and mid range all the way up, select your negative 12 to avoid him blowing stuff up. If you want to do something with loudness, which attenuates the lower frequencies only below 50% of volume and you're not using a DSP, you can do that. Kind of emulates the loudness button on your old stereo. But uh, you can also adjust phone gains, guys, which is kind of neat. You can reassign channels. So you didn't want, let's say, the warning chimes to come out the driver's side. You want them to come out the center channel. Guess what, guys? You can do that. Okay, now this is a pretty cool feature. So it does have time alignment. Again, you would only use this feature if you are uh, not using a DSP. If you use a DSP, please make sure that the driver keeps it in stereo. But the way that you turn on time alignment to the driver with a Zen A2B is through the factory button. If you select stereo, it's no time alignment, just straight up two channel audio. You correct driver's alignment with a surround it now time aligns to the driver. The update process is a little bit different as well. Everything is done online where you automatically will see if you have the latest firmware update or not. And pretty soon there's gonna be a module that is gonna show EQ. So you guys are the first people outside of NAV TV that are seeing this. This is the new Zen piece, which we just started shipping for beta. This is Zen 25. Okay, this is for the older most 25 vehicles. So we now have first in the world on most 50, first in the world on most 150, first in the world on A2B, first in the world on AVB, and now we're actually the fourth company in the world on most 25 for this thing. But this is kind of a different animal, and you'll see why. Okay, number one, 114 dB analog cylinder noise ratio, guys. It's got a really good sound to it. It does all the same things, still Burr Brown outputs. 12 channels like the Zen A2B, the Zen V and Zen M. Here's where the difference comes in, boys. This puppy's got a 17 volt peak output, okay? That's about six volts RMS. So for your guys that, uh, that wanna compete or were telling us that 2.1 volt RMS, six volt peak just wouldn't cut it, we listen to you, okay? We put it into this piece and it's completely configurable through software, okay? So if you've got a, uh, an amplifier that won't accept that, you could take it down as much as you want to. 
Just like the other ones, variable toss link works simultaneously with the analog outputs. No bypass and ANC microphones. Factory Bluetooth echo cancellation works perfectly. So the, the vehicles we're gonna ship this first for guys are BMW. Um, we're actually testing, uh, Ken Ward's got one, Dave Hill from Signature Audio has got one, and we've got a few that are going out to other people with existing systems. Keith, I need to call and talk to you because I'd like you to, to uh, test this for me as well. So we're looking for people with CCC, CIC, NBT, and Evo systems. Uh, they do have to be factory amplified, and we'd love to get them out for you. Uh, I can tell you this will support echo cancellation on Porsche with the uh, 3.0 and 3.1 system. So we'll, we'll be shipping that as an update later. So this is all USB updatable. So we will, as time goes on, support the likes of Audi and Porsche and Range Rover and a lot of other ones, guys, all with one piece. Okay, configurable Triumph Alert Paths. Okay, eliminates factory EQ and time alignment on this piece as well. No converging, eliminates all pass filters. I mean, all the same stuff, guys, that you'd think of. But we're gonna do something kind of clever. So just like what you saw with the Zen A2B, we've actually added a time alignment, okay? So this is a bone stock feature. Why would we do this? Well. I'm gonna show you after the next two slides, something that uh, is really, really cool that's upcoming. And that is a full DSP suite for these things. Okay, these two slides are the two most important slides that we can pay attention to through this whole thing, okay? Zen Audio sets up completely differently than an aftermarket radio, okay? And if you do not follow these instructions, you will have a bad experience because unlike either factory or aftermarket stereos, Zen will not clip under certain conditions, even at full volume, okay? If you have the factory base, treble, and mid centered, so not attenuated positively or minusly, you could take the radio and go all the way up to 100% and it will not clip. Now, that's a problem because most aftermarket installers have realized that at about 70 to 75% on an aftermarket radio, it'll start to go into clip, you know, and they'll set their gain structure up to that. If you do that, your warning chimes and everything else will be unbearably loud. So how do you turn on and set up a Zen audio system? First, you turn the input gain on your amps and processors all the way down, all the way down. Make sure that the factory base, mid-range, and treble is centered, completely flat. Turn the radio to 11, and for you old farts like me, that is a Spinal Tap reference. And do not do it with a test disc. Use extremely dynamic music when you're doing this initially, guys. Your customer is not going to listen to test tones. Okay, now you're going to now adjust your gains accordingly. This is with the radio all the way up. I have told installers again and again and again to do this until I'm out of breath and none of them listen to me. Okay, all Zen Audio products, they have a clip indicator. If you ever go into clipping, the Zen will start flashing like an epileptic. Okay, it will indicate digital clipping. So the next time you guys install one of these things, before you hook your amplifiers up, I would encourage you to try this. Hook the Zen up, okay? Turn your radio all the way up. You'll look at the LED, it will not flash red as long as your bass, your mid-range and treble are all centered. Now go in and start jacking up the mid-range frequencies, okay? You will see that within a couple presses, this thing is gonna be epileptic flashing red at you because guess what? you are now going to digital clipping. So it does have an indicator, guys. Now, this part goes along with the question that was asked before. Modern vehicles are glued together, guys. Why did they do this? Because guess what? They're having to keep up with the European and the Asian companies when it comes to rust warranties. So there's no spot welds. They're literally painting the pieces, including the frame. And then guess what? They're dipping them in solutions and doing all this other stuff. So you cannot rely on these vehicles anymore. The test that we have tried to do for a long time is only 
a test. It does not mean that if you have a system that's pulling 300 amps, that guess what? That negative through the body is going to be sufficient. It's not. But you have to sell for all you salespeople. Sell is the key word and run a ground wire equivalent to the power wire in all new vehicles, not to the frame, not to the metal from the battery. OK, now modern vehicles have multiple electronics that emit noise. Run a three wire twist, guys. I can't tell you how many times we've had a large system where I've got the call saying, hey, I've got this really weird thing in my in my system. Chris McNulty, perfect example, did a system with six amplifiers in a Mercedes Benz. And he called me and he says, Derek, uh, I got this really weird sound and it's only coming out of the tweeters. And it doesn't oscillate. It's only when electronics turn on in the car. Well, guys, what it was is he hooked up the Zen to the factory amplifier power and ground. And he was getting noise coming down that line. So what we ended up doing is cutting that away and actually running it to the ground and the constant power of his amplifier, which we do recommend in any serious system. Doesn't matter what Zen it is. If it's plug and play, cut it loose, insulate the lines, run it back to your equipment, guys. Doing this, we used to call a three wire twist, constant power ground and turn on. It's kind of an old school technique to make sure that your ground path and power are taking the same path, okay? And again, do not set your gain structure with the radio volume at 70 to 75%, okay? If you do, the warning chimes will wake the dead and your amplifier outputs will clip, guys. They will, okay? Not just in case, but it's a reality. So at this point, I'm gonna actually share with you a different screen. Are you seeing my desktop and all this stuff on here, guys? Dave? Sorry, I, had to, I was muted. Yes, I can. Okay, so you can see what I have in front of me? Uh, yep. Here's this project name? Yep. Okay, good. So guys, what, what I'm going to introduce you to really quickly is we are going to be turning on a full DSP suite and not like a cheapy suite. This is completely full featured. Um, we will have this as an update uh, to at a bare minimum right now, the Zen DSP uh, A2B and the upcoming Zen 25. It will trickle down to the rest of the line. The advantage to you dealers is that you do not have to pay for this suite when you order it. You can pay when the customer turns it on. Now, unlike some of the other available cheaper DSPs, this thing has got some real cool features on it, including all pass filters, up mixers, and a lot of other stuff. So you would start out, and we're just gonna fill this out real fast. Uh, M, year, doesn't matter. All right, date. So we're gonna create a new profile. So I created a new project here real fast here. We just test file X5. Okay. I'll create a new one for you. Project name, BMW test. I'll name BMW test. Once you get that in there, you can go to the output router. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, am I going to use an up mixer or not? Do I want to use all pass filters? I can choose multi seat on and off. Okay, I can actually define my digital output. So let's say that I want to do a four way system in front, and then I want to do a full range in the back, or I want to do a three way system in front, and I want to do a two way system in the back. Am I using the center channel? So let's just say yes. Am I using the subwoofer used? I can actually change my volume curves, okay? So if I want something that is custom, I can choose custom and I can draw the graph, guys, okay? If you want something to get loud really fast, there you go. Okay, or a logarithmic curve. This one here is, is the default 60 dB. So basically it's pretty linear up to about 75% and then it ramps up pretty fast. If you want to change it, you can do that. I don't know of any other system that you can do this with. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue here. 
So we get into our full high pass, low pass. We have time alignment. We've got gain structure, all pass filters and frequencies, Q adjustments, guys. Okay, if you want to choose, for example, Lynx Riley 48 versus the Butterworth, we can do that. Okay, we can do anything we want to do with this suite. It's pretty cool. Tuning itself, we can get into two channel view. We can choose parametric or for graphic. I mean, we can drag, we can do anything we want with this stuff. We can mute individual channels. And uh, pretty soon you'll actually have a joystick for the center channel and for the front stage where it will actually give you steerability for your front stage, which is really cool, call an up mixer. Instead of having you guys plug in a bunch of figures, you literally just say, hey, I want it to come a little bit left. I want it to come right. I want it to come back or forward, guys. So this is the future and it's coming down the road very, very quickly. Uh, we expect this EQ suite to be out within approximately four to six weeks, potentially sooner. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now. Are there any questions? How much is that uh, suite gonna cost? It's gonna be very economical. Um, right now, uh, the internal discussions are approximately 75 to $100 dealer cost. Cool. cool. Play. It just, it just... So yeah, we're, we're not going to try to charge the $700. <laughs> but look, the, the advantage of doing it this way is um, there are some drawbacks to using um, external processors. And what they are basically is let's take, um, we'll take a GL Audio 2, which is a pretty good and very common processor. Well, if you look at the specifications, what is the limitations for signal noise ratio on the digital input? I'm not gonna answer it, I, I don't know, but I, I imagine it's not 116 or 123 dB, okay? By putting everything in one package, because we're already doing the digital analog conversion, uh, it makes the implementation of the DSP flawless and will actually produce better results. Uh, it's the same reason why GL Audio and other companies have put the DSP into the amplifiers. There's also a cost savings here. You know, is it easier to sell an amplifier with a DSP or is it easier to sell an amplifier with an external DSP? I, I can tell you from a lot of our dealers, um, enter brand name of what their preference of amplifier, they are doing the vast majority of amplifiers with internal DSP. So same type of evolution, uh, just in the opposite direction. Take my money, please. Well, your first one's for free as long as you got a BMW that's compatible and it's already got a system. I don't want to wait three months for feedback. I, I have an Evo and I have an NVT. Do they have aftermarket systems in them? Not yet. Okay, get building. <laughs> okay. Get building. So yeah, um, we, we own an Evo right now. Um, we're trading it in, in a couple weeks from my understanding, we're buying a 2020 so we can finish the next Zen audio piece, which is Zen ABB for BMW, Range Rover and Jaguar. So, so Derek, um, how far away are you guys going to be from, um, getting to the point where, you know, people can do updates, um, after the fact selling this hardware? Um, that's what this beta test is. So the first part of the beta test with the new most 25 piece is it's being sent out um, with the basic functions turned on. So that would be time alignment and configurable channels. Um, we're just about ready to start in field testing of the EQ. So uh, I believe that we may be as soon as a week away internally of being able to do that with products in the field. So that's why I want to get some of these out there. I want to get feedback before the DSP suite is on and then after as well. And I'm sure there's going to be changes. I would say the six weeks to eight weeks would be a pretty conservative estimate and maybe sooner than that though. I'll have it built next week. Good to go. Fair enough. We need pictures. Pictures are, are... naked. <laughs> no, 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 you can keep those. All right, Derek, is any of that software um, usable just for you know somebody to try out, you know, without having the hardware connected? Um, yeah, you, if you want to, you can go to here. I'll I'll see if I can. I'll post a note. 
this is not the finalized one. This is what we have published for people to play around with and critique. So let me uh, let me put this on a note here, chat, and I'll put it to everybody. So here's a link you guys can go on right now. So eq.navtvdevice.com. Now what you're going to find in there is an example GUI and functionality. Please use it. It's 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 actually to get feedback on. And it does not, as I said, yet have the up mixer on it. We've got that only internally. But if there's anything you guys see that you'd like changed, let me know. I mean, we, we're, we're writing all the software, so we've got all the tools to change it. I like to have extra crossover products. So Chevy Chev is one of my personal favorites to check out some anomalies from trajectories. OK. Anybody else have any questions? Feel free to type them in the chat, or um, you know, you can unmute and ask yourself. Uh, ask for yourself. Um, obviously, we got into a lot of heavy things here. I mean, uh, this is uh, you know, for some of you guys, might be you know uh, out there, and uh, for some of you guys, I mean, this might just be really uh, easy to understand. Um, if there's any questions, I mean, Derek is a great resource. The team at Nav TV is a great resource. You know, uh, we would always recommend that um, ask questions first before potentially picking up the wrong product and, you know, costing you time, money, that sort of thing. Um, the guys down at NFTV are happy to ensure that you are, you know, um, qualifying your, your, your application correctly and getting the right product that you need. So, um, you know, don't be afraid. We highly encourage reaching out to them and they're the experts. They can definitely help you and make sure you've got the right uh, product for your right app, for your application. No, look, if there's any questions, guys, that I've gone over today or any questions at all, I actually put my personal email address there, well, my work email address, rather. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. And, and if I don't know the answer, uh, I'll tell you and I'll tell you that I'm going to find it out, though. So next week, we are doing a session. I don't know if you guys can see that right now. Friday, May 22nd, we're going to be doing part one of the vehicle safety. Uh, um, <laughs> I spelled safety wrong. I apologize. Uh, vehicle safety sessions. There's going to be two of those parts. Uh, Derek, maybe you can give a little bit of like a, uh, inside information as to what they can expect next week. Yeah, but basically what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the uh, now because of uh, Ruby camera laws, the fact is, is that we have 100% penetration into modern vehicles uh, and that the OEM is still very far behind when it comes to adding additional features outside of Ruby cameras. So we're going to talk about different technologies uh, from night vision to side view systems to adding third brake lights uh, to doing trailer cameras. You know, I mean, we have a really cool system which is completely plug and play where you can add a camera to a trailer and it requires no installation inside the vehicle. And we're trying to get shops to really adapt this technology. Um, the way it works is really simple. It has a video circuit and a, um, a video switcher. And when the trailer is connected, it applies power to the aftermarket camera on the trailer and automatically flips the screen. So when the customer now goes into reverse with a trailer connected, it now shows the camera behind the trailer instead of the OEM. Once the camera is disconnected, completely automatically it goes right back to the factory camera. So we're gonna talk about video safety products that are outside of the norm and how to actually approach modern day customers. Uh, a lot of people have the opinion that because rear view cameras are now coming on most of the vehicles that they don't have an opportunity. The fact is, is they have every bit of opportunity, including more. I mean. My wife is a perfect example. She drives a 17, you know, big F-150 Raptor. Our garage is barely able to fit this truck in. She's got to come like an inch and a half away from the wall to get it in. So guess what? It didn't have a front camera. We put one of our interfaces in the front camera and now guess what guys? She can park the car herself without getting out 18 times or asking me to help her. So there's a lot of applications where this is used. Uh, most of it's for safety. Some of it can be for entertainment, though, and we can go over those as well. I'm sure we all look at this from an audio aspect, you know, what NavTV brings to the, to the table. But, I mean, if you look at what's going on now with, you know, travel restrictions and so on and so forth, 
you know, there's all kinds of RV sales being made, all kinds of trailers. People are looking at new ways of, of spending time with their family. And this is a great opportunity to uh, take advantage of that. And, you know, I, I personally will be using one of those on my uh, truck and trailer. I mean, that's awesome being able to back up and not having to scream out the window at my wife who I can't see in the mirror. You know, it's like, hey, am I going to hit that tree? And she's, you know, she can't hear me. I can't see her. We're all really angry at each other by the time it's all said and done. So um, those are great ways of adding additional revenue, you know, to your company outside of audio going to some of these RV outfitters and, and, uh, and making them aware that you have these solutions that are available to them. You know, uh, uh, most of the guys I see driving trailers are not really good at it. I'm sure this would be a welcomed addition to, uh, to, to their vehicles, right? No, and, and basically safety sells guys. It's really easy to sell safety and it's not a category where most men are get yelled at by their wife. You know, I mean, you come home with a $5,000 stereo system, your wife's going to yell at you probably. But if you come home with something that enables her to do something safer that she wasn't able to do before, uh, I guarantee you that not only is it going to come, uh, uh, the news is going to come a lot easier, uh, but you're also going to feel good about it. You know, that's, that's one thing I can say in the safety category. I never feel anything besides happiness when we sell that category, because I know that it potentially could help save someone's life, you know, or help avoid an accident. Hey, and it's not a bad thing when it uh, also comes with a $5,000 audio system with it, right? So, <laughs> so um, Michael was asking if this is available afterwards. I know some of you guys are working multitasking, so it's, you know, uh, a little bit challenging. The EQ Suite, yeah, it will be available as a USB update. It's a pay for update. And the way you would do that is contact Jemson. Uh, it's going to be an auto update that's going to be married to the serial number of the unit. So what would happen is in Canada, you would contact Jemsen, uh, give them your order and the serial number. Um, they'll charge you for it. And as soon as you plug this into a uh, USB and nav TV, it'll automatically update the piece. So it'll turn on the full EQ suite. In the event, he was also inquiring about uh, this actual session. Um, we're streaming it live on Facebook as well. Once this is done, it'll be available on the Jensen um, Facebook page, uh, Jensen underscore CE. So you can find it there if you want to review it or maybe share it with a coworker to, to, to educate him as well. And uh, if you need, um, we'll be posting uh, a file that could be downloaded as, as well. Just reach me um, confident, sorry, after, after uh, the se seminar is done, I'll send you my email address. I'd be happy to send you the link. If there's no more questions, we appreciate you guys spending the additional time with us. We, uh, you know, spent about an hour and a half. We got started a little late. We apologize for that, but we hope that you guys got a better understanding of, you know, um, why the Zen Audio product is, you know, the gold standard of the industry. Why it's better than other products that are out there. Um, what makes it uh, um, more cost effective in the grand scheme of things. You know, your labor is worth time. Uh, troubleshooting, all that type of stuff, you know, things that, that fall into the equation of costing you money when you can add one box in and not have to worry about, you know, figuring out wires and trying to reverse engineer things. It's a much better way of doing things. Plus, you have a great company like NavTV backing you up. You know, they've, uh, if you were on last week's session, you would have seen the tour of the factory where they're building the product themselves. And that's always a big bonus. You know, if they can build the product themselves, they have the ability, obviously, with the engineering team in-house to be able to attack any type of future uh, issues that might come about because of a, a firmware update in the vehicle or something like that. So being able to resolve problems is really important. I'm sure you guys can all appreciate the fact of having that support should it ever get to, you know, a situation like that. So if there is no more um, questions, we will... get a question. Okay, Aaron? Uh, is the suite, the EQ suite, uh, is it controlled only through a laptop or is there going to be apps or is it going to create its own Wi-Fi network and you log into it and be able to control it? We're not going to do apps because what this thing is capable of doing, you can't really do on this thing. So it will be a PC. Yeah, we do have plans for a Wi-Fi network in the future, but the initial launch will be a PC because everything is housed on our servers. So they'll plug in in the future. Okay, thanks. That's awesome. No, I know what a pain in the ass it is to run wires when you're tuning a car, believe me. Yeah, it's all good. We've been doing it for a long time anyway, so. 
<laughs> Great. Any more questions, guys? Okay. Uh, I'm just doing a quick review of some of the comments here. It looks like we've answered everything that we that uh, was asked of us. So appreciate your time. Appreciate Derek Schmiedel's time, of course. Thank you for doing this, Derek, and taking time out of your day. That's our pleasure. Thank you guys for coming. I really appreciate uh, having you here. And we will see you guys next Friday at 1 p.m. Key drills are optional. <laughs> oh, no. Keith with a good time. Fantastic. Thank you, Derek. <laughs>